check this guy out. I don't really know how to describe it. Almost druzy. It's like macro scale druziness. I'm a sucker for gems and minerals that form in very different habits from one another. Green gems, we got emerald, we got peridot, we got green sapphire, we got chrome diopside, we got serpentine, we got jade, nephrite and jadeite, we got green fluorite, <laughs> green every allochromatic gem. <laughs> green, 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 green. I'm probably missing an obvious one, but those are the ones that come quickly. Oh, I've got a clue. My naming made gemstone history. There's no bell today. <laughs> That's the, that did not ring a bell. But we'll unbox it and we'll see what it is. We'll see if the side of it will ring a bell. Ooh. I'm lucky today because I've been reading and learning about this stone recently this week, so it's fresh on the brain. This is prenite. So prenite is actually famous for being the first gemstone named after a person. It was discovered by Colonel Hendrik von Preen, who is a Dutch mineralogist, and that's where it gets its name, Prenite. And another fun fact, it was discovered in South Africa, and it is the first gemstone that was described from South Africa even before diamonds were ever found there, and before it became a prominent source of other gemstones. Just looking at this Prenite specimen, it can range from kind of green to yellow, but this one definitely, to my eye, has a bluish quality in some places. It's pale. Honestly, in some places, it kind of looks waxy or greasy, where it's not quite vitreous in places, but it does have a certain flavor of luster to it that could definitely be classified as waxy or greasy. And then it's got like these botryoidal formations over here that sort of rise up and curve, and they have a really nicely like textured surface to them. In some places, it is, a, in kindness, a little dull as far as luster goes but it's oily in other places, particularly over here on this side of the specimen. I love seeing gemstones with atypical lusters. Most of the time, everything is like vitreous, dull vitreous, bright vitreous. But when you get something like waxy or greasy or oily in this case, it always perks me up a little bit. All right, next box we got here for us today. Look at that. Oh man, what a unique formation on this thing. Check this guy out. I don't really know how to describe it. It's a lot more, uh, Luster's almost druzy. It's like macro scale druziness to a degree. It sort of looks like when you take wet sand at the beach and you take a big fistful of it and you slowly let it drip from your hand and it bloop, 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 bloop. I'm a sucker for gems and minerals that form in very different habits from one another. I mean, aside from the color, and this guy's actually a little bit bluer, although uh, some of the tips kind of tend toward beige, they sort of lose their blue color and they start to turn brownish yellow, which is a color range that I spoke to earlier. But, I mean, look at the difference in formation. These guys, it kind of looks like the back of a serpent coming out of the water, whereas these, actually, I'm glad I said the word serpent because this formation I would probably describe as the snakehead formation of prenite. And that word kind of describes formations of prenite that are coming up and then they sort of flare out a little bit at the end, sort of like the head of a snake being wider than its body. But this one is super cool. They're varying heights and they're sort of interlayering and overlapping and crisscrossing. A lot of really cool texture in this piece. So despite having lots of different crystal habits, prenite forms in the orthorhombic crystal system. It's relatively hard. Uh, it's like a six and a half on the most scale, which means that you see it in jewelry sometimes if you can get like a nice facet, good color on it. It's sturdy enough that it can be a, a wearable piece of jewelry for sure. These guys are pretty close in color. I am hoping for a little color variety. We do have crystal habit variety, clearly. All right, let's see what we got. This, this box is heavier than the other two. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, it's greener than the other two, for sure. And it's actually got a little bit of yellow going on. So this one's really cool. At first glance, it looks quite a bit like our first specimen, our botryoidal guy, our botry boy. But this one is a little bit different. I think this is what's kind of typically called a Roman helmet formation. And it's called that because if you look closely, yeah, we've got some rounded botryoidal type growths. But if you look in and see what those mounds are made of, it's a kind of an aggregate of a bunch of different like crest-like formations. My mom is European, so I grew up watching Asterix and Obelix cartoons, and those are two Gaulish characters that are always fighting off uh, Romans. And so the Centurion helmet is kind of like that. It's got the little brushy brushy up at the top and has a little crest running down the middle. So anyways, anecdotes aside, that is where this formation gets its name because it's a botryoidal shape, but 
it is a kind of dome formed of different intermingled crests. Which is a pretty unique crystal habit. I haven't seen a whole lot of this before. This one's got some nice patches of luster as well compared to the first one. Definitely some glistening spots. I'm gonna put you over here. Next box. Let's see. We've had our uh, Roman helmets and our um, snake heads, and there are the fingers. Oh my God. At first, I thought maybe this guy was the fingers. This guy were the, these were the fingers, but no, we've got our fingers right here. Check this out. So these are really, really cool. Definitely kind of fragile, so I'm gonna handle this one with care. This is another one of the colors, or maybe lack of colors, that pre night can present. It's a pale, pale green, blue kind of color. It's like if this one sort of had a lot of the color taken out of it. And traded it in for height, <laughs> because these guys are very long crystal formations. It's so cool, because I thought this was interlocking. I thought these uh, Roman helmets were interlocking but these guys are all in amongst each other. So pre -night can be found in a lot of places around the world. South Africa, like I mentioned, India is one of the best places to find pre -night, as well as China, the United States, Africa, Australia, just to name a few of the best places for pre -night. Right, We got another box here. This one's lighter than the, uh, some of the previous. Oh, no way. We got faceted pre -night. This one is really yellow. I would have almost guessed that it was uh, sulfurous. I'm pretty sure I have seen this specimen on our new website, gemstones.com. So if you want to learn more about pre night and see some of the other colors and formations that can come in, definitely check it out on gemstones.com. It's a great resource for that kind of thing. Wow, check this out. So like I said earlier, pre night has a hardness of about six and a half, which makes it very suitable for jewelry. And I cannot believe the color on this. It's like toxic yellow. Pure pre night is colorless. It has no color inherent in its chemical formula. But that means that it can take on just about any color you like, depending on the conditions under which it forms, like irradiation and heat and other elements. Iron colors these guys, they're varying colors, but this yellow color is totally different from what we have on the table so far. So it's a rectangular style cut. I would almost describe this as a fancy cut, but the table is really narrow, and then it's got steps that go down that lead to the girdle and a nice tall pavilion as well. I like this faceting style. It really lets you see right down into the gemstone and see the spots of color saturation. So this guy, if I remember correctly, is from Australia, which I mentioned is one of the uh, hot spots for pre night. And this one, I think, is a good example of that cloudy oiliness that you can get in pre night because it's translucent. It's definitely allowing light to transmit through it, but there's a certain cloudiness on the inside of it. It's unlike cloudiness that you can see in other gemstones, which are caused by very obvious inclusions, but this is just. There's like a general streakiness just below the surface that is kind of creating this billowy, oily kind of uh, kind of effect. It's like um, when you're staring down into a, like a, a, a nice pot of like rich broth. <laughs> you know, you can't see to the bottom, but it's clear, but you can't see to the bottom. Anyways, this is a very nice stone. I'm, I'm glad we have this one today. Good exhibit of color variety. All right, we've got our last box here. Whoa, check that out. Oh, so all these, Ooh, 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 hold on, we got a two for here. Is this a uh, pre night in Connemara marble? Yeah, right on, I love Connemara marble. I love saying Connemara marble as well. So Connemara marble is from Ireland. It's got that trademark green color, which makes it pair really nicely with some of the pre night specimens that we have here today. These guys have a whole load of inclusions as well. This is really cool. I like these bracelets. And then, oh, wait, we got like two little um, hard candies here too. So check this out. I'm no fashionista, but this is a great pairing. Pre night with the rich, earthy green of Connemara marble. But what's interesting is I notice in the pre-night beads that we have on here, we see some really nice epidote inclusions. And epidote is a silicate mineral that you can find in lots of other gemstones. But it looks particularly nice in this pre-night, especially this almost, I'm not gonna call it colorless, but it's just hinting at green with a, with a little splash of blue thrown in there as well. Epidote inclusions are pretty common to pre night, but I'm also looking for copper inclusions in these guys, which can also be found in pre night. And I love a good copper inclusion. It's what makes a lot of sunstone, for example, look spectacular. Show yourself, copper. I may have found a little bit of copper in one of these guys. It's not exactly uh, lighting the stone up from within, but <laughs> that's okay. And these are beads as well. Yeah, uniquely kind of faceted beads with nice epidote inclusions. Epidote can be kind of greenish like the pre night itself, but it can also be black or a dark brown, which is what most of these guys appear to be. They're pretty dark in body color. Speaking of color varieties, I'm just remembering an exceedingly rare orange pre night was discovered in the Kalahari manganese fields in South Africa. Don't book your flight just yet. It is very unlikely to find anything like that. I suppose there could be more out there, but it is very rare, very unique find indeed. 
Uh, let's take a closer look. Oh, all of these guys have really interesting surface features. These guys are the fingers. These guys, we've got the Roman helmets over here. We got the snake heads over here. There's a lot of really great choices on the table for a closer look, but I choose this guy. So guys, tell me uh, down in the comments below, which of these specimens that we have today of pre-night was your favorite? Don't forget, of course, to like and subscribe. And also check out gemstones.com to learn more about pre-night, see some of the other colors it can come in, or any gemstone that strikes your fancy. Thank you, of course, so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.